Secret of the Silver Earring. Ironically enough, this game was released in 2004, and I didn't get a copy of it until much later. It is the uh, second release of the Sherlock Holmes series by Frogwares. And when I got it, I got part of a collection of the first three games after playing the fourth game. Now, this particular title takes place over five days and is, I believe, more in lines with the classical Sherlock Holmes mystery. And it's more point and click for everything. Even movement is point and click, which can be troublesome sometimes, but not not impossible. Your only interactions with items is to click on them. And I think depending on if you're t and you get symbols saying what you can do with them. If you can pick something up, if you can talk with somebody. And there are a few puzzles in this game that really do require you to think to solve them. Which is kind of fitting with Sherlock Holmes. He was always a thinker. Although he can be a man of action when he needs to be. You need to sometimes solve the puzzles to figure out motives or get an idea on what motives are. And you are finding clues in this one. As you do in previous, in other entries, of course. However, the clues in this one are a little bit, well, are also answers. Each uh, day, when you complete everything you need to do for that day, you are given a quiz on what you've learned. And... Evidence, testimony, even factors that you deduce lead you to the answers for that day. Even by the end of day five, you get quizzes and you also get optional questions that you can answer. And I don't know. I've never been able to get all of the answers to reveal. So obviously I missed some things in my investigations. The quizzes, of course, mark your day, the ending of your days in this game. And uh, I must admit, there is one rather difficult well, two slightly difficult sections of this game. And I think part of that comes to uh, one design choice they made in this game that affects it. But I'll come to that in a bit. The first is a task that is performed uh, in the latter part of day three. Uh, as part of it, you must uh, make your way through a, a uh, the yard of uh, a theater that was purchased for, I guess, reusing the resources or reusing the building type purposes. But in order to... Uh, at night, you have a guard there with a few guard dogs. Uh, so you must move from point, uh, from 
point A to point B and then from point B to point C. Uh, the trick is, is if either the dogs or the guards spot you, it's, quote, game over. That's what makes this one difficult. Especially depending on the, the monitor you use, because uh, this was uh, before flat screen monitors became a norm. And of course, the monitors got bigger and bigger. This makes it very odd. You have, still can see certain things, but other things make it it's harder to see. And positioning makes it difficult too. Uh, the second section that's difficult is a forest course. You have to make your way to ruins, but you must be careful what path you take, what road you take, because if you're spotted, um, it makes certain information possibly difficult to obtain. Uh, there is also, once you get to the location, there is a fire in progress, or just started. So you have to rush back to where you can find water and then ru rush back to the fire to put it out. Uh, the timer is very tight. I have not been able to do it while the timer is... when that it's, quote, in the green. I suppose that if you do it within a shorter time, you will benefit, possibly more clues available to you. And these clues, of course, will reveal the... Uh, basically, who helped reveal the full details on the story. Now, like a typical Sherlock Holmes mystery, the story is not so clear-cut. While everything makes the... And this is where it is odd, because it starts with you attending a function only to be witness to the host of the function getting shot. What makes it more tragic is, by all looks, it looks like the one who shot the, the uh, person was his own daughter. Other things get revealed with certain people and uh, why a certain pattern arrangement which makes no sense and other things revealed and how does this tie in with the theater because it's revealed that the theater is also part of it. The theater troupe. And uh, as a typical Holmesian mystery, Sherlock Holmes is able to put all the points together. including what the silver earring has in store for it. Uh, by the time the story is done, Sherlock, of course, exposes the killer. Or should I say, no, I won't spoil it. 
But I will say that there are guilty parties, as this was not a crime that could be committed by one person alone. So, as the course play, of course it plays out, the proper ending, Holmes reveals the killer, or the guilty parties, how it was worked together. including a mysterious third person that was involved but later killed. And in his usual way, he's a little bit cryptic about some of this stuff when Watson asks about it. In the end, of course, Holmes succeeds. And it's a testament. It is a beautifully, beautiful story. Very, very typical of a Holmes mystery. Where not everything is as it seems right away. And once it's done and over with, you know, it's a good mystery, it's solved, and it's a fitting story and a happy ending. Now, this game, it does show its age. There were some design choices, I think, that were made many years ago that obviously don't age well today, and I've seen that happen in a few games before. Is some tie certain things to the processor clock speed. Some take it, don't take into account other monitor sizes and future monitor sizes. This game does that because you will see a few times where things look off kilter. I mean, you see Holmes walking in a room, and it looks like he's walking on on the side wall. Or he's too tall for the screen. This is about one of the few drawbacks of the game. Because I do believe that... But it also shows that this was, of course, the second game they made, and certain things didn't continue or didn't carry over as is you have now more control over Holmes and the later tiles in the franchise of how he moves it's a decent story and uh, well the game does show its age and it's some of its design choices it's still playable. And that's all I'm going to say about the this particular entry in the Sherlock Holmes timeline. Uh, Sherlock Holmes game series. I do thank you for listening. And until next time, take care and have fun. Bye.